Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Martin Monti and I'd like to discuss the use of thalamic low intensity focused ultrasound as a potential intervention in disorders of consciousness. Disorders of consciousness are a set of related conditions typically acquired after severe brain injury, including coma, the vegetative state, and the minimally conscious state. Now, over 20 years of work have revealed that these conditions are best understood as a large scale dysfunction within a cortico-striato-pallido-thalamocortical large-scale mesocircuit, with thalamus particularly being a keynote in the dysfunction. Indeed, many interventions that have been attempted uh, target various nodes uh, of this circuit. Now, um, deep brain stimulation in particular has shown very promising results. However, both in acute and chronic patients, the rates of patient exclusion are very high due to, due to the inability to undergo uh, the surgery, uh, excluding between 80 to 87 percent uh, of evaluated patients. So this trial was aimed at assessing whether it's possible to modulate thalamic activity, much like DBS, but without the surgery, through the use of low intensity focused ultrasound. Now on the basis of these data and some preclinical data, we launched a first in man clinical trial in both acute and chronic disorders of consciousness. We only excluded patients who had deep sedation, uh, who, were, who had other history of brain injury prior to the brain injury that led to the disorder of consciousness and patients who could not undergo MRI. The protocol included neurobehavioral testing before focused ultrasound with using the coma recovery scale revised, then one session of focused ultrasound MR guided, and then additional neurobehavioral testing. We would always try to then bring the patients back at a week's distance for the exact same protocol. Unfortunately, particularly for the acute patients, most patients were discharged from our facility before they could undergo the second session. Now, in terms of the stimulation itself, it was done at 100 Hertz pulse repetition frequency with 0.5 milliseconds pulse width and a 5% duty cycle. The acoustic intensities involved are all within what the FDA deems safe. And the administration itself was done over 10 minutes in small blocks of 30 seconds with 30 seconds of no sonication in between. In terms of what we think we are doing, numerical simulation suggests that our focus has a longitudinal component of about a centimeter and a quarter and an, a radial component of less than half a centimeter. Now we enrolled um, 13 acute patients, nine chronic patients before getting halted because of the current circumstance. Um, and as you can see, this was a mixed um, mixed sample, including both TBI and non-TBI patients. In terms of the acute patients, uh, I'm showing time on the x-axis and change from baseline on the y-axis. And you can see that there's an overall uh, upwards trend, uh, trend in our patients. However, we do not have a comparison cohort, so we cannot tell if this trend is due to our intervention or if it's spontaneous recovery. In terms of chronic patients, on the other hand, we did have uh, a comparison historical cohort who also received multiple coma recovery scales over the span of a week, but did not have a treatment. In these patients, we saw no change over the span of a week, whereas our patients had uh, over 1.6 points change in the coma recovery scale, meaning um, that our patients do show an average um, amelioration in their condition, uh, which is very exciting. So I'd like to close by saying that TFAS is a very promising technique for both brain mapping and clinical interventions. It remains very safe. In our sample, we had four adverse events, all of which were determined to be unrelated to the sonication. And finally, we do have some really interesting preliminary data. I have to warn you, however, that none of this was blinded, none of this was sham controlled. And thank you very much.